Okay, <clears throat> we're going to talk about a radical shift in, in, in infrastructure. You can bring the pot out. How many of you have a cell phone? Okay, how many of you have seen a pay phone lately? All right, not very many. That is a radical shift in innovation in a very short period of time. What we're going to do in the next 12 years is we're going to take 70% of oil powered cars off city streets. Now, I don't know how many of you have seen this commercial from CSX Railroads where they talk about they can move a ton of freight 423 miles on a gallon of fuel. That is an example of a commercial network driven by efficiency. So if we know we can move a ton at 400 miles per gallon, why do we move a person at 18? Okay, the reason is, is that mobilizing to fight World War I, we monopolized communications under AT&T and socialized power and transportation infrastructures and put it under central planners. Central planners have as a priority consistency. So by definition, innovation is a consistency failure. If we want innovation, we need to do exactly what we did in 1984 with communications and throw it back into a free market governed by performance standards. Government needs to declare what we need instead of how to build it and throw it back into innovators. I doubt that Steve Jobs could have invented the iPhone if he had had to get permission from a bureaucracy to after his failure with the Newton, okay? Even him, and he's, in order to innovate, you have to be a bit disruptive. Bureaucracies are not very accommodating to disruptive behavior. Well, we're a very disruptive bunch of guys so, and girls, so what we're doing is, instead of moving a ton to move a person, you get in one of these little couple hundred pound to 500 pound pods, and instead of an internal combustion engine, these little motors right here can move you around a city in little robotic vehicles. And instead of waiting for a train, think of it like nature. Nature kills off the stuff that doesn't work as well as other stuff. You have 20 trillion little red blood cells in your body that stream resource to need on demand. Okay? Here's actually the first one that we built, this one hanging from a rail. There's my grandson showing the reporter how to operate it. So he's a four-year-old. So <clears throat> it's really hard to, to teach uh, bureaucracies that you can innovate, but a four-year-old can operate this. So if you can operate an elevator, you can operate a J-Pod. You get in, you tell the computer where you want it to go. It is a physical version of the internet. You look up the website and it chauffeurs you there. So if you're, we look at, how many of you read the book, Good to Great? Okay, spectacular book, I recommend you read it. Two other books for radically changing infrastructure, I recommend you read three others. The Black Swan, nothing like it in the world, how the transcontinental railroads got built, and um, Outliers. Okay, so those books lay out that transportation is the means for changing energy systems. Railroads change the energy systems from biofuels to fossil fuels. When we deploy out these networks, and we put these things out here so that, here's an example of connecting the Mark Center to Van Dorn and to East Falls Church. When I build that network, we put solar collectors over these top of these rails, and because we use a tenth the energy of cars, trains, and buses, and yes, cars and passenger trains use the same energy as a bus, no savings. Using one-tenth solar collectors over the top of the rails let us gather enough energy to power these networks. So if you've ever seen these solar race cars that operate at 90 kilometers an hour or 55 miles an hour, these things can gather 17 times the energy. We do not have an energy problem. There is a spectacular quote that I recommend you look at. Oh, by the way, storing solar energy, and, and you can look this up, Edison laid out that sun and wind ought to be used instead of burning coal and wood like squatters burn the front fence. There is a great quote, I recommend you read it, and I don't, I don't have it on that list, but we can operate within a solar energy budget. Life developed within a solar energy budget. 
prior to World War II, the US operated within a solar energy budget. If we use the distributed nature of the transportation system to gather the energy to power that system, and we store that energy as synthetic natural gas so that we don't have to have the electrical grid, my guess is you'll see the electrical grid go away in much the way you saw the um, telephone grid go away also, okay? So I've got no time left. So anyway, if you ever want to see this, my guess is that we will be building this from LaGuardia Airport to the train stations at Shea Stadium. Uh, I've got meetings with Governor Christie's staff next week in New Jersey. Uh, we had an agreement to build to the Mall of America, send the Mall of America staff a note asking them to please let us build. If you guys want to help build these in your neighborhood, because the solution to peak oil and climate change is self-reliance. Self-reliance is local. So if you want to help build these things in your neighborhood, send me an email. Thank you very much.